I'm in a coma for 30 years. I emerge from the coma with a clear mind. I handwrite a will. I then drop back into a coma. Is the will valid? Hi, I'm Darren Finling of The Probate Pro. And the issue of mental capacity is an important consideration for both estate planners as well as attorneys who litigate will contest cases. There's a statute that governs this particular issue of capacity. In Michigan, it's MCL 700.2501. The statute has four primary elements that have to be satisfied for a person to be considered of sound mind, to be of sufficient capacity to execute a will. First, the individual has the ability to understand that he or she is providing for the disposition of his or her property after death. Pretty straightforward. They have to have a basic understanding they're signing a will. Second, the individual has the ability to know the nature and extent of his or her property. Okay, again, pretty basic. The individual knows basically what they own. They don't have to know every asset or exactly the holdings of every asset, but they have to have the ability to know the nature and extent of their property. Third, the individual knows the natural objects of his or her bounty. It's kind of an interesting use of terms, the natural objects of his or her bounty. Well, in, in essence, what this means is that you have a basic understanding of who your family is, who are the people that can take from your disposition. And fourth, the individual has the ability to understand in a reasonable manner the general nature and effect of his or her act in signing the will. So the idea is that they have a general, or I'm sorry, a reasonable manner. In a reasonable manner, they understand the general nature of the effect of signing the will. So again, it's not precision here. It is a reasonable manner, the general nature and effect of signing the will. So people who have diminished capacity can execute a will. People who are in decline surely can execute a will. So these four elements have to be satisfied to have capacity. Now again, each case is unique, but what's important to know is that the uh, testator, the person who is signing the will, the judging of whether they have sufficient mental capacity is not done weeks later, years later, uh, decades later, but rather as of the time of executing the will. So in the question that began this video, where I asked, what happens to somebody that's in a coma for 30 years, pops out of a coma, handwrites the will, and then goes back into a coma, theoretically, if at the time they're executing the will, they satisfy these four elements, the will is perfectly valid. So what happened three weeks earlier in a coma may be relevant. What happens three weeks after the executing of the will may be relevant, but what is absolutely relevant is the capacity of the individual as of the execution of the will, which is not always easy to determine after the fact. If you've got questions about these issues, these fights that occur about capacity, executing the timeliness, the appropriateness of the executing of a will, reach out to a skilled, competent probate lawyer. If you've got questions, you're welcome to contact us at The Probate Pro, 833-PROBATE, or visit us at theprobatepro.com.